6.30, so we will start this meeting. Transportation Planning and Policy Committee of Kern Council of Governments. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Stan. Man, big crowd sounds different. Roll call, please. I own. <laughs> Present. Couch. Here. Helton. Here. Blades. Present. Crump. Here. Warney. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Crichton. Here. Para. I'm here. Prout. Here. Raina. I'm here. Scribner. Here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith is absent. Vasquez. Here. And Murillo. Here. <laughs> Good. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Andrew. I live at 2207 Lewis Puller Drive, Bakersfield, California, 93301. And uh, I'm joined by my brother. Jay Vigil. Same address. Same address. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we represent Bike Bakersfield. I'm the communication coordinator, and he is the shop manager for Bike Bakersfield. And we are here to uh, show off uh, part of the EV grant. Uh, some. Uh, of e-bikes that we've been uh, showing off in the community throughout all of Kirk County, uh, Wasco. We did the ride along. We showed off some of that. We're going to be doing Arvin uh, in the next couple weeks during their Arvin uh, Energy Fair. And uh, to give a little bit more specs on uh, what these e-bikes can do, uh, Jay will take over. All right, so these e-bikes range at a range at about 40 miles per charge. Uh, the average recharge rate is approximately three hours from a dead charge. The really cool thing about them is they're all rated to hold up to 400 pounds because these are all the mini cargos as well as the full size. So a rider of 200 pounds and you know, 200 pounds of groceries. You can pull these around, it's active transportation, it's a lot easier um, than jumping in the car. In all honesty, anything within eight miles, it's faster on a bicycle than it is in a vehicle. So these things are great, like all day, every day. And it, you know, reduce their carbon footprint. As far as any other range specs, they're 750 watt motors. Um, they're class two. They top out at 21. They do have a governor in it, so they don't go faster. They're rated for the bike trail as well as city. So you don't need a helmet. You don't need a license. Um, after the age of 21, I would hope everyone rides with the helmet. But yeah. Yeah. Did I miss anything? No, that's pretty All much right. it. Thank <laughs> you so much. Uh, once again, to Kern Cog for uh, giving us this opportunity to. Uh, uh, show these off to the community and uh, you know like I mentioned before uh, we're going to be giving these away um, to active participants uh, throughout the summer so any of our events that we attend if you uh, show up and are an active participant 
you just take a yeah yeah so uh thank you all and uh yeah thanks i have a question oh sure i have a question what is the cost of these what's the range of the cost so the average range is anywhere between about 17 for the smaller ones uh for the larger hundred ride wagon <laughs> is uh 21. 17 to 21,000? Yeah, or 1,700 to 2,100. Oh, yeah. And, wow. And there's a lot of potential. I mean, this is like bare bone. I mean, we can add. Yeah, you can trick them out with seats, set them up for two upriding, full cargo uh, uh, floorboards, panniers, foot pegs. They've got front rear tail lights. They actually have brake lights for them, too. So when you do stop, they're bright enough so that someone behind you in a vehicle or pedestrian can see. Um, actually they have, they have a lot this in fact the middle one right there that's the one for someone like say you have a motor home and you're out going somewhere instead of taking the extra vehicle that one folds completely up and stow and can be stowed away so yeah they've got potential is that the kit price and then you built it so it would be more if you had to buy it already um so they always come no matter what unbuilt mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. like uh, i think if you were to go down to the manufacturer you can pick them up they're pre-built but I'm not necessarily sure if that's something that they do or not because these are primarily uh, what is it um, there's a big word I'm not good with words uh, can you talk into the mic please? oh I'm sorry oh there it's it's one of those like buy and they send and then yeah. you take it to a bike shop and then they have it fully assembled and also the reason you do that is so that doesn't void the warranty yeah what's the cost of these bikes uh, low end like a 1,400 high end 2100 not including uh, taxes and shipping and handling. If I just want to comment. You can, like you said, 1400 is about low end, but you can go up. You know, there's mountain bikes that you can get for, you know, four, five, six thousand dollars. But a real good one, dependable, you can get for 1400. Yeah, th that's like enthusiast level <laughs> up to the 5000 range. <laughs> Any other questions? Great. I can say uh, it's good, reliable, affordable transportation. And uh, yeah. one question I always get is, do you have to pedal? Uh, no, you don't have to pedal, but it's it's awesome to pedal. Right. There's a pedal assist. There is a rev, but yeah, yeah. the class twos, you can you, they have the throttle or yeah. or you can get pedal assist, but. Uh, if you haven't ridden one, the reason that, you know, take these out to people is because it, it is a whole different experience than a regular bicycle. Uh, people are amazed. You know, you can go, like you say, eight miles. Uh, you don't work up a sweat, and you can enjoy yourself. You're outside, and it doesn't take too much longer than it takes in a car. Yep. And we'll, like I said, throughout the entire June and July, we're going to be doing events. You'll all be seeing them. So go to bikebakersville.org, and uh, we'll see our calendar, and you'll see all the events there. We'll be in all the different communities. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to put that in the lobby. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go get a helmet if you guys want to ride one. <laughs> Okay, while they're moving, I'll read consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved. Let me back up. Was there any other public comment? I assumed that was it. There's, okay, <laughs> sorry. Hi, Lily Parker. Um, my address I don't have to do that okay thank you I've very much <laughs> I just wanted to say to Kern Cog thank you for your recommendation of REAP 2 funding to Bakersfield Senior Center uh, I haven't been here since that recommendation so I thought tonight would be a good night just to say thank you thank you is it moving along or where okay great good any other public comments? Okay, now I'll move on to consent agenda opportunity for public comment. 
All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Is there any public that wants to remove a consent item? Any member that wants to remove a consent item? Chairman, I have a question about item C. So Yes. So we want to take item C off consent. And I move to approve the rest if nobody wants to pull the rest of the, any of the other items. A second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mario. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Reina. Yes. Prout. Yes. Hara. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Warney. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Couch. Yes. And I own. Aye. Thank you. Now we'll hear item C. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have a question. Uh, it says here that the results of the survey may affect SB road maintenance funding for your community. And it also says that Rich Scratch, Shafter, and Bakersfield responded to the so survey from Kern County. Did the rest of the cities did not respond? I'm really interested in Wasco, but. I'm, I just want to make sure that that's what happened. Uh, Ms. Mr. Ball will handle that. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair and uh, Council Member Reina. The um, uh, survey uh, had a um, pretty good response, but there were portions of the survey that were not responded to by most of the cities. Uh, some of the more difficult, onerous questions didn't get responded to. And so uh, we brought that back to the uh, TTAC and discussed that. And they actually requested KernCog to see if we can figure out a way to assist, uh, particularly some of the mid and smaller sized cities, to uh, 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 come up with the information that's needed for that rather oner onerous part of the survey. Okay. And so that's why it says here that uh, data was used from previous years uh, to complete the that's survey? That's correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, no further questions. I move to approve, Chairman. Second. Roll call vote, please. I own. Aye. Couch. Yes. Helton. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Warney. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Para. Yes. Kraut. Yes. Reina. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. And Murillo. Yes. Item five, draft final current area regional goods movement operations cargo sustainability study phase two, Mr. Ball. Thank you, Chair. The cargo study. Uh, this is our fourth year in doing the cargo study. We are on the second phase. There is a potential third phase. Uh, this item before you, uh, the action on this item is to receive and file uh, the final report. Attached to the staff report is uh, a series of slides that you can kind of look at as a um, uh, a, an executive summary of all that went into the uh, cargo study. Uh, this cargo study looks at developing and funding more sustainable goods movements uh, projects countywide. Uh, it was funded by a grant from Caltrans and the study incorporates comments from local communities including stakeholders from Shafter, Lamont, Arvin, goods movement professionals and local government staff. <coughs> the study uh, suggests updates to local truck routes, circulation planning element maps, right-of-way footprints for interchange and other goods, uh, goods movement facilities, 
uh, that are vulnerable to development or encroachment, uh, potential funding mechanisms as well. Uh, KernCog staff has uh, applied for Caltrans Climate Adaptation Grant for the Cargo Phase 3 study. On May 31st, 2023, uh, the Transportation Technical and Regional Planning Advisory Committees unanimously recommended that the TPPC receive and file this draft final report. Uh, so the action again is to receive and file, and I'd be happy to answer any questions if, at this time. Do we have any questions for Mr. Ball? Seeing none, can I have a motion? Second. Roll call vote, please. Mario. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Zach Scribner. Aye. Raina. Yes. Prout. Yes. Para. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Warney. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Couch. Yes. And I own. Aye. Thank you. Caltrans report. We'll mix it up and start with District 9. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> you beat what? me here by two minutes. I guess. Trips me <laughs> up. <laughs> Good evening. Um, from District 9, project updates. We have the Freeman 3 Cap M on State Route 14, um, south of State Route 178, north of Red Rock Canyon State Park. The crews have finished their um, recycle of the asphalt and started this week re uh, laying the rubberized asphalt. And I got stuck behind that on my way here, so I know it's going on. Good. <laughs> the emergency Kern slab replacement uh, project continues in multiple locations on uh, State Route 58 in and around Tehachapi, um, which is resulting in the uh, closed eastbound and westbound lanes. Um, the crews are continuing to repair slabs and fill in um, digs and holes on the roadway. Um, the Mill Street ramps have been reopened, and good news is the work is anticipated to conclude in two weeks. We're working on uh, three bridge repairs in the Tatchby uh, Mojave area, one on the Sand Creek Canyon Road undercrossing, one on the overhead railroad crossing east of exit 167, and then in the drain just west of exit 140. That work is taking place um, overnight. The State Route 58 truck climbing lanes project has now been successfully merged with the Keene pavement rehab project, uh, which is great news. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, change request for that has been processed and is going forward and we are uh, combining those two projects. Because um, they've both been now fully funded through the SHOP program, we uh, have withdrawn our applications for the rural grant and the TSEP grant, which will free up our staff to work on other um, applications and maybe make some other projects more competitive for those programs. The um, Highway 58 uh, rest area near Boron is still closed. Four <laughs> new pumps were ordered. <coughs> The lead time to receive those pumps is 12 to 16 weeks, so our delivery is anticipated uh, between mid-July mid -July and mid-August. So still waiting on those. Let me see. What, um, we'd like to say that District 9 supports Kern Cog and its desire to realign Cal City Boulevard by building, building an off-system frontage road into the Rosamond Boulevard interchange at SR58. And although this is primarily a locally sponsored off-system project, there's a tie-in to the state highway system. So we're exploring ways that we might be able to assist um, or even partner with Kern Cog to um, obtain grants. We're currently investigating a possible opportunity that might be provided by our headquarters division of transportation planning to use a resource augmentation in order to develop a PID um, document, a project initiation document for that project. So we'll keep you posted on that. We've nominated it to our headquarters and we're waiting to hear back. 
Uh, we have $1.18 billion in federal funding available with the Safe Streets and Roads for All grant program. Um, the purpose of this grant is to improve roadway safety by significantly reducing or eliminating roadway fatalities and serious injuries through safety action plan development and refinement, um, including pedestrians, bicycles, public transportation users, motorists, personal conveyance and micro mobility users and commercial vehicle operators. Applications for the program are due on Monday, July 10th, 2023. We'd be happy to partner with anybody who's interested in uh, applying. We have a uh, Clean California Roseman Zero Escape Project construction, which is anticipated to conclude uh, late June. And then we have two projects, the Mojave Pavement Project and the State Route 58 that we're moving towards the final environmental documents on. We've collected public comments and we're working on responding to those and those should be wrapped up within the next uh, month or so. That's all I have, unless there are any questions. Thank you, I have a couple. You, you mentioned safe streets for all. Is that any local streets or is this strictly Caltrans? It's only for local agencies. So we, we can support you, but it's for local agencies to apply for only. Okay, great. Uh, another question, as you mentioned, uh, you were drawing the rural grant because the truck climbing lanes fully funded. On your fully funded on the shop program. Yes. And that's fantastic. And the idea is maybe we can apply next year on the rural grant for another segment of the truck climbing lanes. Yes, and that's a possibility. Could work or again yeah. with Turncog and maybe do a joint application. Definitely. Again. We can look at that mm -hmm. or other projects. Or that yeah, would be great. It opens, opens the door for different yeah. different ideas. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, that's that's an idea that <laughs> we're, we're going to push. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions for District 9? Seeing none. District 6, you're up. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sometimes nice going a second. She took one of my items anyway, so that's good. <laughs> um, for several months, you've heard me talk about the Clean California Cycle 2, which closed last month. Um, excited to announce in our district, we did receive 29 applications. So we were the second highest in terms of number of applications out of the 12 districts, only second to the LA area. So um, very good showing by, by our local agencies. I haven't got a breakdown of from which counties. So I really can't speak to how many came from Kern, but hopefully high number of ap applications will translate to a lot, another successful cycle for Clean California. So hopefully by next month, I'll have a breakdown of, of where those applications come from. If they're one of your agencies, I wish you I wish you luck if you start the scoring process. Um, a new NOFO will be coming out pretty soon for another federal grant opportunity. Uh, last year, we had the Reconnecting Communities Pilot Program. This year, that's being combined with a new program called Neighborhood Access and Equity. Um, so there's about 1.5 billion-ish available from, this, from these two programs that are combined this year. Um, once that notice of funding opportunity comes out, there'll be some webinars. We'll make sure that our staff is communicating with your agency so you can participate in the webinars to see if there's a, something that might be interested in applying for, and we're happy to, to assist any way we can. A um, couple emergency projects ongoing that you're probably very familiar with, uh, Stair Out 155. Um, that is a long-term closure <coughs> and this there at 178 uh, that's gonna be a long-term one-way reverse traffic control um, for that segment as they continue to work in that area and slow uh, stabilization and work on culverts etc uh, the Bakersfield freeway connector the stay route 5899 interchange that project about 95 percent done they're continuing to work with miscellaneous punch list and waiting to remove the false work at the centennial connector bridge uh, stay Route 46, uh, Segment 4B, this is the two-lane section going to four-lane near Lost Hills. Uh, that project uh, continues to be in the same configuration for the four lanes from Bruning Avenue to east end of the project. Scheduled completion is by the end of this calendar year. Uh, for Segment 4C, the adjacent uh, project bids opened April 19th, so we're currently working on awarding that project. It does appear it'll be going to the same contractor, so hopefully that's a seamless transition uh, for construction to continue. Uh, the Maricopa Highway Cap M project along State Route 33, uh, wrapping up environmental. We expect to be able to advertise that project this summer. There will be some rehab projects as well as some uh, pedestrian improvements at that location. Uh, the left turn channelization project on State Route 190, 119 and Taft. Uh, construction continues to progress. We're about 85% complete with that project. Uh, the stair out 184 sunset roundabout we're about 90 percent complete with that project the remaining work is 
is electrical hydro seating assigned installation and we expect completion of that project uh, this August. Um, the State Route 223, State Route 184 roundabout project. Um, that roundabout is open to traffic. There is some punch list work still occurring out there, but expected completion would be next month. The State Route 184 Morning Drive uh, Rehab Project, that project advertised back in May. Uh, we expect bids to open July 6th, and then we'll start construction uh, probably in January of 2024. And then some of the Clean California projects going on. Um, I know last month, uh, Mayor of Arvin asked a question about the tree removal. So that is part of the construction activities that just start with the, with the Caltrans Clean California project we're doing out there. Uh, we are communicating with the city of Arvin about doing a groundbreaking out there. They're looking to address some irrigation concerns, but we're looking to coordinate a groundbreaking uh, along with a, a tree planting effort at the same time for Clean California. So we've had some pretty successful tree planting events throughout our district, so looking to kind of highlight a groundbreaking with a, such an activity. And then the other two Clean California projects that we've talked about are the Stay Route 204 at the Garcia Circle and then the Stay Route 204 Road Diet project. Um, so those projects looking to award contracts and hopefully get construction started this summer. And then lastly, I did want to uh, congratulate McFarland. I know they have a ribbon cutting tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, first one I've heard about at five o'clock on a Friday, but uh, the B Caltrans <laughs> folks attending that event, and um, and I, th I think you're the first in the state. I think I know you're the first one to, to kick off a project, the first groundbreaking. You might be the first one to actually have the ribbon cutting and wrap up a, a clean California local grass project, if I'm not mistaken. So congratulations to the city of McFarland on that, and um, I'm assuming you're going to talk about SB1 recommendations. No. Can I, can I uh, ask a question, Mr. Sure. Chairman, if you're done, Michael? Sure. No, you, you can talk about it, SB1, but Michael, the, the uh, Sunset Roundabout uh -huh. was initiated, uh, unfortunately, by a fatality. Uh, we'd be real interested in doing um, a, a ribbon cutting or okay. opening ceremony, if Absolutely. you can uh, coordinate that. Yeah, I'll coordinate our public information office. Um, since I'm doing congratulations, I did want to congratulate Kern Cog. So, the SB1 competitive programs for TSEP we've been talking about, the CT staff did put out their recommendations, and Kern Cog did an application for State Route 99 and 58 for the missing connector ramps, and it is being recommended to CTC for approval. That approval will take place in the next CTC board meeting for $9.38 million. Um, although not in Kern County, I did want to highlight, too, because there's been a lot of tension for the 99 corridor of completing this corridor, and Kern Cog has been very supportive of the projects outside of Kern County, like Tulare and um, Caltrans put in an application for TSEP, and we partnered with TCAG, and um, that was being recommended for approval, too, and it's for $38 million for the right-of-way phase of uh, the Tulare 99, which will be through the city of Tulare for the four to six lane that includes the interchange as well. Um, and they were also awarded for another interchange project, so I, th I think the Valley did, did pretty well this year with the, C the TSEP recommendations. So that's all positive, and again, congratulations to Kirk Hawk for a successful application. Great. Appreciate that's it. That's all yeah, I have. That Thank you. Is, <coughs> is great news for Bakersfield. Any questions for District 6? Chair, I have yes. a question. Mr. Naval, um, since we're on the topic of McFarland and congratulating us, who's, who's, a, who's a point of contact for the maintenance alongside the freeway on and off ramp? Because uh, it's a very ugly eyesore for the community. Yeah. <laughs> that might not be your department, but it can. Unfortunately, it's not my department, but um, I sit next door to the guy who is. So I, I, I could talk to our maintenance, op maintenance ops deputy, and then we also have an office chief, uh, Jason Mao, I usually take back concerns when I come to meetings like this and express them. Is it which are their change you're referring to? Both, both, both and both sides. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Chairman, I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Uh, Michael, I want to thank you for following up on the question I had regarding bike lanes on Highway 43 and Highway 46. Staff is looking at it. So okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and if you'd like us to initiate that conversation or if you want staff to get back to us once they've evaluated, we're happy to sit down and talk about, like we talked about the parking constraints and things like that, but happy to sit down with your team right. or come out and visit. We briefly touched uh, upon it uh, at the last council meeting, but I told them that it would be up to them to figure out whether that's feasible. Mm -hmm. I took a ride um, and I noticed that the, you know, Highway 43 is not wide enough and there's plenty of uh, vehicles parking on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, Highway 46 is possible to do that. So. Thank you. Hey, anything we do to help, thank you. Any other questions, comments? I have one real quick. Um, when that interchange there at 99 opens, I know in Fresno they did this, um, and I'm not sure who to start the conversation with, but 
would it be possible does Caltrans have to okay for us to do an open streets along that area right there when, when we when we do the interchange is it I, I'm not sure if I'm following the question I'm, I'm uh, sorry are you talking about the centennial quarter yes the, the new I, I don't think Caltrans owns that until we until we after finish it's, it in it's finished mm -hmm. so Caltrans doesn't have doesn't need to be involved in any of that conversation to do a an open streets there in centennial quarter I guess yeah open streets that's what we mean talking about close the street to to vehicles well and it won't be open yet I'm just right. saying when it when oh. it op when before it opens um, uh, we did the same thing on on mm -hmm. Mohawk when Mohawk yeah. opened over the river yeah. uh, it was open to cyclists first and pedestrians and oh, we all okay. walked across it right. and and drove um, rode across it so i was just wondering yeah i mean i mean technically long as it's outside of our jurisdiction there's not a need for some kind of traffic control what you're doing then i mean i'd like to be part of the communication conversation in case you wanted to participate or show support right. if anything but yeah um, that, i guess that's more i was i was looking mm -hmm. at it's for caltrans to show support to to do something like that no ha happy to have a conversation okay Absolutely. thanks Anything else? Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have uh, several items on this agenda. In your board folders tonight, I'd like to direct your attention to the May 31st Local Assistance Delivery pr Report. Kern Cog is in first place with 149% uh, delivery. As a reminder, the way we go over 100% is we capture funds from other uh, other agencies in ca California that can't deliver and in some cases other states that can't deliver. So congratulations to all of your staffs um, who are who, who, and also thank you to all of you who have put pressure on your staff to deliver these projects. Um, it's a team effort. Um, it, it also reflects a, a rather large project we had this year on Route 46, but even if you pull out that large project, we're still well over 100%, which, as you know, is something that I strive for. We're, that number will only increase in the next few weeks. Um, Bakersfield is expected to deliver another half million dollar CMAC project, and Ridgecrest may deliver a one million dollar project. So. We may be closer to 160%, but before we get to the end of the f fiscal year. So great news. Thank you for your help. And please thank your staffs for all delivering all these projects. Uh, Kern Cog was notified by email on June 13th that our SCS is officially approved. And like Michael mentioned, we, we, are, uh, we have been recommended for an award of about almost $10 million that was contingent upon our SCS being approved. So this is great news. This culminates five years of, of effort, unfortunately. On, also on June 13th, I attended a ribbon cutting for a CMAC project in Tehachapi. It was nice to drive on a brand new road funded by a CMAC project. Uh, Michael mentioned um, our TCEP uh, recommended award will be acted upon by the CTC on June 28th and 29th in Sassoon, Sassoon City. I will be attending that CTC meeting, not only for that item, but we have several other items as well as the city of Bakersfield. Over the past month, I've um, attended and held meetings about State Route 99 and 58, 204 Union Avenue, 7 standard, although we haven't heard very much about it, 7 standard and 43 roundabout is still alive. Safety improvements are coming on State Route 33, specifically shoulders. Um, just this uh, afternoon, I attended an update meeting on State Route 46. And um, great news, Kirsten, on the truck climbing lanes on Route 58. But to be very specific, uh, we would like to um, partner with Caltrans and submit another rural grant application for Location 3, and we're willing to help uh, assist you with the writing of that application. And that concludes my report. 
uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, subject to any of your questions. Thank you. Any comments or questions for the director? Mr. Couch. I think this is it. I don't know what the number is, but Ms. Pacheco, this this is the highest ever. Thank you. Any other comments? We will adjourn that meeting and start the current Council of Government meeting roll call the same. And any public comments for the current COG meeting? Seeing none, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Any public comments for the consent agenda? Seeing none, would any member wish to pull an item from consent? I'll move approval of consent agenda. Second. Roll call vote, please. I own. Aye. Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Um, Vasquez. Yes. And Murillo. Yes. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Just a couple of items on this agenda. The meeting for July 20th, we will be dark. So we will be dark in July, and we will hold a meeting in August. Since we will not be meeting in July, tonight is Mr. Joe Stramaglia, who is dialed in, and you can see his <coughs> face there waving to you, will be his last board meeting. He has served the people of Kern County for 31 years. He will be missed. Best wishes to him, his family, as he enjoys a well-deserved uh, retirement. And I've uh, known and worked with Joe for well over 20 years, since before I was uh, the executive director here, back to my Caltrans days. And in your folder tonight, is a timeline covering the next four months. A, uh, as we were reminded in public comments on the TTAC, a, a flyer for the safe routes for cyclists Kern County in Kern County communities. A, uh, the previous um, delivery local assistance delivery chart that I referenced, and a schedule of cash disbursements. And Joe May. Uh, you want to say anything, Joe? But th thank you, Joe, for your service. <laughs> um, he, oh. Good evening, everybody. Here, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just sent you a little note. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, these last several years have been a little complicated for all of us with COVID and all of that, but I just have to say, I did not have 20 seconds of boredom with this job. Um, it's It's been incredible to work with um, amazing uh, staff, um, just the, the group collectively uh, over the many years, you know, starting with Ron Brummick, because he was our first, my first executive director at Kern Cog, and there are several of you on the board today who I remember from the very beginning. And, um, you know, I, I, um, I'm, I'm, it's profound for me that, that I got to do this. And so I can't say thank you enough. And to staff, as well as the board, to have gotten to serve your communities through all of you uh, truly, truly a pleasure. So thank you, Aaron, for this opportunity. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank in case you can't read it in the. Thank you, Joe. 
in the chat he wrote thank you Aaron it's been my honor to serve Kern County appreciate it enjoy <laughs> the retirement I will <laughs> <laughs> very good Any questions for the director? Any member statements? Hearing none, this agenda says executive director evaluation in closed session, but we did that already. So we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>